examples is disgusting. I want to tackle this first. What you think of Gary Johnson? I mean, obviously, the mainstream media is pushing him as a messiah against Trump, so you know he's bad. The establishment is doing it. And then get into everything else that's happening, the economy, the world, where you see all this going. John Rappaport, investigative journalist uh, with nomorefakenews.com. Thank you for coming on with us today. Hi, Alex. Let's all vote for Hillary Johnson. She is going to divorce <laughs> Bill and marry Gary. And let's have a big celebration because... They are uh, apparently as sleazy, slimy, and slippery as each other, and uh, it's a good fit, I think. Hillary Johnson for president. I mean, they brought this guy in as a, an agent, basically. You know, he, I'm a libertarian. No, you're an agent. That's what you are. You're there to disrupt the vote, to take some votes away from Trump, as many as you possibly can, while pretending you're a libertarian, who, by the way, wants to ratify the biggest uh, globalist takedown ever in the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, where that comes off as being libertarian is, uh, you know, beyond anybody's uh, recollection or intelligence because it's totally counter. So the Libertarian Party is out. I mean, they're gone. Uh, why don't they just put up a sign that says, uh, who's going to pay us the most money? We'll run the candidate that'll take the votes away from the other guy. I mean, that's libertarianism now. That's, to me, the definition of the Libertarian Party. We're for sale. Who's got the highest offer? We'll say anything. We'll put any candidate up. It doesn't matter what he used to say. This is what he's going to say now. <laughs> and that's the way the whole thing's going to work. Beautifully said. I mean, uh, you know, they demonize Trump for coming up with good slogans to describe someone's character. Crooked Hillary lying Ted. What do we say about Gary Johnson? Uh, uh, Hillary's husband, Gary Johnson? Or yeah. Hillary's running mate, Gary Johnson? I mean, how do Hillary's, we describe him? Hillary's husband. I love it. I think that's a good well, one. Well, you Hillary's coined husband. it. I mean, you coined it, John Report. Okay. Well, can I sell it? Do we got posters, stickers, whatever? Let's make <laughs> I mean, I was thinking uh, Snake Man Gary Johnson. I was thinking, um, you know, election spoiler Gary Johnson. I was thinking Democratic Party, um, you know, Savior Gary Johnson. I mean, I'm not thinking it was as good a terms as you have. I was thinking, I mean, how do you really describe him? Slimy Gary Johnson, uh, anti gun Gary Johnson. I guess it's really Hillary's husband, Gary Johnson. Or Hillary's husband, Gary Johnson. I mean, there it is, as far as I'm concerned. She wore Bill out. You know, he's gone. He's just a Hulk. She's getting there herself. But in the meantime, she could use a little bit of an infusion of energy from somewhere. So let's marry off Hillary to Gary. Hillary and Gary. Hillary Johnson. Uh, it really Johnson. is transparent, though. How can the libertarians support the secret TPP that basically they now admit takes everything over? It's the world government final mega treaty. Uh, and you've got him then bringing in an anti-gunner who says arrest people that have guns that hold over five rounds nationwide, make them all criminals. I mean, how in the world are libertarians putting up with this? I, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, who are they even now? They come together, what is it, every four years, and they pick a new guy to run, and then they go away. They don't have any status or standing that they've established on their own. It seems like they're just basically raising money off the word libertarian. You know, if they didn't have that in their title, if they call themselves, uh, I don't know, the Gary Johnson Party or, or just the the four-year party, every four years we nominate somebody, nothing would ever happen. I mean, they're just poaching on the word libertarian, which has a history. It does mean something. Uh, Ron Paul was over there, you know, on that side of things. Uh, but now it's just, we're for sale. Who's got some money? Uh, we'll offer you a candidate that'll say what you want him to say. And I agree with you completely. This guy... Uh, he reminds me, Johnson, a little bit of a uh, snapping turtle, you know. When I was a kid, a snapping turtle came into our backyard, and I was warned. And I looked at this thing. It was pretty big, and it wasn't moving. And I thought, what harm could that be? You know, just let me walk up to it and look at it. And I kind of put my finger near uh, where I thought his head would be, and all of a sudden, pow, he was a snapping turtle, man. <laughs> 
And that's the way he turned in that interview all of a sudden. Well, don't use that term and so forth. And then bang, you know, he suddenly attacks. And, the and, and, and again, I get mad interviews, too. But it was the instantaneousness. It was how he had this fake friendly demeanor. And then instantly, like a moray eel or a snapping turtle, shoots out of the hole. And I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. The creepiness in that studio a few years ago. And I interviewed the guy a lot. When he was sitting there. At first, I thought like something was wrong with his face or he, he was having a seizure because he was like really looking like he wanted to kill me. And I was like, and he wouldn't talk to me during the breaks hardly. And, and then after a couple of breaks, I thought, this guy is really hating on me, but then getting on air and acting all nice. And, wow. and, and I remember asking the crew, why did he even come here? It was acting really weird. You're a smart guy into psychology. I mean, that's what you write about. What do you think that sounds like, what you just heard myself and CJ describe? Because believe me, that's what he was doing. I've seen... A lot of people who have this, you know, they used to call them yuppies 10, 15 years ago. A sense of tremendous entitlement, education, scholarship, learning, and all of this. And they talk and they smile and they kind of come off like sort of wimpoids, you know, and they know what's best and everything. They love listening to themselves talk. They love listening to themselves talk, and they feel, you know, white shoe, as you said, very entitled. But, of course, I'm for the masses and everybody, and I love everybody and all this bullshit, basically. But then, if you puncture that, suddenly, now comes the real person, right, who's totally unhinged, a uh, snapping turtle, who can't stand, you know, to be around anybody that disagrees with them, or challenges their viewpoint or even asks them a pointed question like this guy did in the interview. No, 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 that's not allowable. Suddenly, you know, they go crazy. And it's that's right, they can't even debate. And, and now I realize that's why he was getting so mad. I was just nicely debating with him. And he was getting yeah. madder and madder. Yeah, they, they can't enter into one of those conversations at all because they have to be, you know, on top. That's Basically, it's kind of like a fascist in a <laughs> great picture there, a fascist in sheep's clothing. Right. And they're very nice and they kind of come off as humble. And, uh, you know, the whole thing. I'm sure that you could get Gary to talk for hours and hours about his phony ideas on white privilege and how. Uh, you know, he's uh, doing penance and repentance for this and that and everybody else should and all this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, yeah, there's a good resemblance between this turtle, snapping turtle and Gary. The nose, the mouth, boy, he's ready to, uh oh, here he comes, you know. Uh, it's that it's that schizoid thing, you know, where he's going to be wonderful to everybody about everything until... There's a danger that, you know, he might be exposed for something that he's saying and that it's wrong and that you're going to drill down a little bit deeper and it's going to get wronger and wronger and wronger. And then all of a sudden he's going to totally snap at you. And that's what happens. This is a longer interview the town hall did a great job with. He never debates anything. He just goes, no, no, no. Well, what about the executive orders of Obama? What about how we're being run by foreign treaties? I'm not discussing it. I, I'm an intellectual. I, oh, I mean, I, I <laughs> yeah, guess exactly. really he's an empty suit is what it comes down to. I think so. And you find that with uh, college professors, for example, you know, when you actually start to engage them on a point that they can't really defend and they've got their whole mask set up so that this is the way they're going to feed you their spiel and so forth. And now you puncture that college professors can become instant snapping turtles. You go outside their box where they've got everything figured out and defined I mean, this is, again, entitlement. It's a position. I've got my position. I, I won my position. I earned my and position. It, and, and like you said here. last week, part and parcel of totalitarianism, whether it be fascism, communism, whatever it is, a cult, is that it's all rigid, top-down systems where everything's got to be finite and basically frozen in time. That's what these people are looking to build. That's why they hate the Renaissance system. Absolutely. Yeah. Open freedom, creativity, imagination, new ideas, new frontiers. Let's have solutions instead of insanity. Let's have real solutions. Let's lift people up instead of making them permanently dependent upon whoever the leadership is, the government and so forth and so on. These kinds of ideas. Hey, I've got an idea, professor. You know, you're talking about uh, how 
uh, sympathy for the people who are downtrodden and so forth and so on. Do you know that in Chicago, there's a group of people who are operating inside a huge building and they have an urban farm there? And people from the inner cities are growing food, fantastic amounts of food, and they're learning how to grow food, and the kids are there, and they're trading food, and this is like a renaissance of nutrition. And if the government wanted to, the federal government, they could suddenly show up and say, you know what, this is a fantastic idea. Instead of spending $2 trillion on the war on poverty and failing completely, let's spend a few million dollars and let's put, oh, how about 4,000 of these urban farms in inner cities across America? No, instead, as you know, I've had the guy on that did it in, in L.A. when he started planting stuff in the, in the uh, mediums, they came to try to stop him. But he fought exactly. back and it backfired. But exactly, we need to bring urban farming back. We have a special coming out next week with uh, Tim Kennedy about urban farms. And this wow. is exactly getting back to normal agrarian activity is the beginning of relaunching humanity. And that's why they're trying to harass the Amish. Uh, these these uh, uh, city farms, uh, they're going after true independence for a reason. Absolutely. And also, I mean, here's perfect uh, community organizing. You know, six people get together and say, we're going to start an urban farm and everybody can come in on board and we'll trade food that we grow. And kids will be running around, squeezing the cantaloupes and the squashes and whatever, and they'll learn how to plant food and everybody will be happy and they'll be eating nutritious food and so on and so forth. I mean, you would expect a federal government that had any kind of sense that actually wanted solutions to poverty would put that at the top of the list, right? So you bring up something like this to a guy who is entitled, white shoe, yuppified, uh, you know, trying to be distinguished and so forth and so on. And all of a sudden it's outside his box. It's an actual solution. You say, well, instead of writing all this bullshit about how the poverty, uh, people who are in poverty are doomed unless we revolutionize our minds about privilege and all, how about we just actually help people to lift themselves up? What an idea. Oh, no, 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 no. Now they turn into a snapping turtle because they feel threatened because... Exactly. They want those inner city kids in there 12 hours a day watching TV, the other hours of the day, uh, you know, at school under government brainwashing. And notice every city that's Democratic Party run is the most horrible cesspit you can imagine. And they know it's a system they're running, but they now want to deploy nationwide, worldwide. We're about to go to break, but I've got a lot of issues I want to raise, a lot of clips I want to play, a lot of things I want to go over with you, John Rappaport. But what else do you want to be covering today? Give us a preview. Well, we can certainly talk about this uh, pesticide spraying in South Carolina that killed millions of bees in what sounded like one day. I mean, this is like a chemical warfare against South Carolina, you know, the Zika pesticide. So we can touch but on that. But they said it was safe. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No problem. You know, yeah, maybe a little bit of a health problem. All of a sudden, the colonies are gone, the bees are gone. And what about the people and the animals? Oh, no problem. No problem. Just... Let's move on. Well, I mean, even the London Guardian says radiation is no longer really bad for you. I mean, you saw those articles <laughs> by Mombiot and others. They said we should, you know, radiation's good, John. Okay, well, let's move next to some nuclear reactors. Let's all move to Fukushima then, right? I'm sure the apartment, uh, the condos there are pretty cheap now at Fukushima. What we see happening is the insanity of the elite. Those that the gods would destroy, they first make mad. And we're just here watching on the wall, Paul Revere's. Self-interested. I mean, I don't want to live in a collapsed society. And, and we see what's happening in Europe, in Germany. We're getting into that. We're into the economy. We're going to cover what's happening with the bees. Straight ahead with John Rappaport of NoMoreFakeNews.com. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. And I've, I've been pretty darn nasty to Gary Johnson. I, you know, I held my tongue. Haven't had him on in years because the guy gave me the willies. And now he's an anti-gun, pro-globalist little creature working for Hillary. We're going right back to John Rappaport of NoMoreFakeNews.com. Steve Bichenik joins us in the next hour for like 30 minutes, and then I'm going to take phone calls the last 30 minutes into the fourth hour. I may even host some of that today. We've got uh, a lot to cover. Anthony Gucciardi is going to be hosting, co hosting with me uh, in the fourth hour today. I'm going to go ahead and do most of the fourth hour. I made that decision because the crew does so much work with all these clips and all this research and, and all this incredible stuff I haven't even gotten to yet. I, I, I must cover it all. But I want to be clear with everybody out there watching. I don't look at the news and try to come in here and exaggerate what's going on. My head now, more than ever, spins 
when I do research. And it's so much crazier than I can describe to people. And they've had the White House run Media Matters and others make a big deal out of me saying on air, I've studied this for 25 years. I don't know about spiritual forces in the universe. I've, I've studied physics. I've studied what the elite believe. Billions of Christians believe that the devil is an outside force fallen on this planet, manipulating humanity to kill, steal, and destroy, and uh, basically attack God's creation. And then I look at the world and what the elite are doing. They'll go out of their way to hurt the planet while they claim they're the guardians of it. They are trying to play God. Ray Kurzweil says he's going to merge with machines and become God. Almost every major billionaire out there goes to these private consortium meetings and they discuss how to bring in world government, exterminate the majority of us. Bill Joy writes cover articles about it, admitting it. And then the White House puts out a thing saying Jones is crazy and says space aliens run the planet. No, what I said is that what you read in the Bible and what the Bible says the devil wants to do to us is basically what I see going on. So whether you're a Christian or whether you're even an atheist, you look at what's going on, they're creating aliens on this planet. Then they cut right there and they put it in the New York Times and they say, the guy that Donald Trump calls brilliant says, it looks like space aliens run things. No, that was a complex discussion I had. I said, I don't know that, I haven't seen that. The globalists act like aliens. Psychopaths believe they're their own species. The elite in big college papers and books say they're going to break away and, and be their own gods. I just quoted Ray Kurzweil. I can quote all these people to you. So whether it is the devil, whatever it is, the elite are basically manifesting this. When they splice humans with animals, when they do all these horrible things, when they create all these GMO hybrids, and release them out in the open air from microscopic up to humanoids, it's extremely dangerous. Then, do these creatures have rights? They're in this gray area. Animals have rights, humans have rights. These are the big discussions. And then the White House organs make a joke about it so we can't have a debate as all this technology races. Just like I told you the NSA 20 years ago was listening to keywords and putting it in dossiers and the DEA was doing parallel construction, setting people up with fake court cases. I had whistleblowers on at the time who were just as important as Snowden. But back then they didn't arrest whistleblowers, so it never even got coverage. The internet wasn't big enough then. So what I'm getting at here is, I told you all about the New World Order, all about their global plan, all about their carbon taxes, how they would set it up, how they would roll it out, how they'd use huge immigrant waves and collapsing third world to then make the West fall as well. I broke it all down. I showed you the university papers. I broke down Cloward and Piven. You know as an audience this is real. You gave me a lot of information as well. Now they've constructed this thing, and I really see it in the news. I see it on the street. In the last few weeks, they have intensified their operations 20 times. It, I believe the New World Order started September 1st. That's a date I'm putting on it. They like to launch things September 1st. And just the whole atmosphere has changed. All the intensification of evil, the intensification of mind war, the intensification of the brainwashing has all just crescendoed like a huge finale of an orchestra at the end of a play. And right when you thought it couldn't get louder, it went way up above that. Now, I'm going to ask this gentleman, because he's a really smart fellow, and he studied this in depth, and he can probably bring some clarity to this. Disagree if you disagree, John. I know you will, or agree. And then break down, before we get into what's happening to the earth itself and the bees, why this is happening and, and, and what you would say about this point we've reached in the universe and, and, and why the elite universally are building something that's anti-human and so ugly. I mean, there is a spirit to it. There is a energy to it. I don't know where it's coming from. I mean, let's just say, theoretically, I don't know. I mean, I'm a Christian. I'm raised that way. I, I, I love goodness. I love God. But, but let's just, for the sake of debate, what is it? And then we're, we're on this planet out here in the universe floating around, hurtling through space at 40,000 miles an hour, and then people make a joke when we talk about evil in the world, and where does it come from? Every... Culture has marveled, why do some of us do these bad things? Why do elites organize together, build pyramids, and start chopping virgins' hearts out? I mean, what's going on? Because 99% of us, John, don't want to do that. 
Absolutely. Well, here's one of the things anyway. Look at what's happening. Anybody who says now that a nation has any right whatsoever to be sovereign in any sense of the word, independent, self-sufficient, ooh, God forbid that, or an individual, that's what it really comes down to. Independent, makes up his own mind, sees things the way he sees it, makes decisions, responsible for his own life in every way possible. This is the cardinal sin. This is what has to be attacked. Because the globalist plan, obviously, is to make one giant unified cheese glob of the entire planet that is run from above by them. That's the, that's the theme. That's what they've been shooting for and aiming for all along. We're all together in this, and it's all one. It takes a village, and, you know, all of this kind of insane, supposedly humanitarian propaganda is a complete front for evil. That's the way the game is played. It's been played that way probably since the beginning of time. But now there's technology, and now there's media, and now there's uh, you know propaganda and so forth. So they are perceiving the globalists, the controllers, the evil ones, a bigger threat than ever. Because they can see around them that there is a movement in the other direction. People are saying, wait a minute. Are you saying that, uh, I don't know, I was raised in France. And so if I consider myself French, I'm committing some kind of a thought crime now? That I have to be European with everything that that implies? That your implications? And then you merge with Islam. Now you have to merge with that. They're stealing our identities and then replacing it with death. Yeah, with death, exactly. Bow down, don't say anything, forgive everything, be humble, and die. I mean, that seems to be the motto of globalism. And we're sitting, we the globalists are sitting in the steamroller, and we're coming down the street. They're saying, it's our planet, we took it over, we're about to merge with machines and become gods, get ready, there we're going to kill you. And then they come out in publications every day now. We talk about this 20 years ago, John, no one would talk about it. And, oh, we're kooks. We were reading their own white papers. Now it's all over the news. The earth's going to be so great once humans are gone, and elites, you know, are going to merge with machines and become gods, but only after they kill you. And you're like, whoa, they're in the news saying this, but it's like, it's in New Scientist, and it's on CNN, like it's fun, like, wow, you've got to admit it would be better without us on Earth. Right. Let's all commit collective suicide as our final act of uh, contrition and penance and so forth. And I've been following this whole, you know, technocratic thing for a long time as well. The whole idea, like Ray Kurzweil and the No, other, I know you have. That's why I've got you. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's why I raise it. Go ahead. And the, and the you know, the techies... The rise of the techies, the idea that they suddenly got into their heads that information itself is some kind of uh, spiritual quality. And if we can just supply people with the right answers through, uh, you know, shaping information and the right algorithms, then everything's going to be peaceful and fine on Earth. And the way to do that is to hook up the human brain to a massive supercomputer that's floating somewhere in space. I mean, they, they take this as obvious, you know, and if you start to raise questions, wait a minute. You're saying that my brain can be connected to a computer. And what is this computer going to give me again? Answers to questions? I mean, how is that different from the priest class that rules Egypt or uh, Stalin or somebody else who's giving the answers? Even if they're supposedly the right answers, they're not my answers. I didn't come to those conclusions. I'm now going to be at the mercy of a computer? And then they say, well... Yes, but it's not only that. You see, maybe you want to play the piano. We can download, download that into your mind, too. Or you want to hit 60 home runs a year uh, in the uh, in, you know pro baseball. We can do that for you. Or you want to leap tall buildings in a single bat. No problem, because the computer can give that to you. And people just sit there and go, boy, this sounds like a really great future. Are you kidding? I mean, can you, uh, people... Can you think about this and how ridiculous? I mean, aside from being a total fascist setup, 
Can you even start to think about how ridiculous that sounds? How is a computer going to do that for anybody? It's not. It's just another way to make slaves. And we also have the UN pushing the zeitgeist movement. Uh, that guy comes on my show and says, you'll be put in a re-education camp if you don't submit. Then he comes out and says, I'm a liar. It didn't happen when I have the clip. And then the UN and the New York Times start funding it, saying, yes, a computer will decide what you eat, where you live, what you do. Well, that's always been their model of technocracy. And then people say, oh, we'll be free. No, the globalist will program the computer. I mean, it's so obvious. And then people say, why are you attacking the freedom of zeitgeist? We won't have to work anymore. I mean, that's like telling me Obamacare was going to be free, John. Right. We won't have to work anymore and we'll be free. And as you and I have discussed before, Alex, people have lost, many people seem to have lost their capacity to even understand what the word freedom means. So you can now, uh, as a propagandist, substitute anything you want to for the word freedom. A computer making you a total slave and taking all your decisions away and running your life is freedom because <laughs> it's fair. Yeah. That's right. Suddenly, fair becomes free. Wait a minute. How did that happen? And then who defines and, fair? And it's this and word who game. Who defines fair? Who defines fair? Exactly. It's that word game. Freedom is unlimited burgers at McDonald's. Is that what that means? In other words, if somebody says to me, you can eat free for the rest of your life, that's the same thing as me being free, having freedom. And then you find out it's Monsanto and Bill Gates and what they're feeding you is going to kill you. Yeah, right. That's the punchline, right? Yeah, you're free to have all the goodies you want and they will uh, <clears throat> kill you. So now everything's good. So people don't even understand what the word means anymore. So if you say the word freedom. Well, now they say people... I have a right not to be offended. And so there's only small free speech zones on the colleges now. And they're only open a few hours a day, a few days a week. So see, you're, you're in a free country in this little free zone that we license, that we can close. But the definition of a license is the authorization to do something that would otherwise be illegal or a letter of mark given to you by the royalty. Exactly. At Harvard Law School, which I wrote about this week again, you know, there were people, these are supposed to be the best and the brightest college graduates, and they go on to the most prestigious law school in the country, Harvard. And what happened there? Students said that they didn't want to hear the word rape or violate, meaning does this conduct violate the law? <laughs> because either word could trigger them. These were like the most elite law students in the country talking to their professors. Learning how to be basket cases. Learning how to become Create yourself over in the image of a basket case, exactly. How do I become a victim? And these students were saying, well, rape law shouldn't even be taught in law school because it would be traumatizing and it would reduce the overall performance of the students. So now there's not even any pretense that there's education going on. You know, it's not even, yes, we are. <laughs> no, it's all about this propaganda campaign to uh, encourage and nudge students over into thinking of themselves not just as victims, but endless victims. And like the only power they talk. have is to go bully someone into doing what they say. I mean, it's like major universities have done things like Lynch Hall, named after a liberal patron that built the hall 50-something years ago. And, and then, but the, the attorney general agreed with it and said, yes, the, the, uh, well, you need to change the name. It's hurtful because of lynching. And then her name is Loretta Lynch. I mean, there's no, <laughs> it, it's like people screaming at you going, you're an effing white male and they're a white male. I want to play this clip since you mentioned the technocracy. It's, it's a good one, I know. Tom Scott's got a great YouTube channel breaking this down. The virtual hell of uploading yourself into a machine and then they zap the bad memories. That means your true memories and consciousness. And then this is what the military is looking at now, zapping, that's a lobotomy, folks, but, but high-tech lobotomies for the troops, here it is. Welcome to life. We regret to inform you that your previous existence ended on January the 14th, 2052, following a road traffic accident. However, your consciousness was successfully uploaded to the life network by your primary care provider. You may be experiencing some confusion. Please remain calm. Life contains...
Your mental state is being temporarily adjusted in order to calm you. Please remain calm. Life contains over 30,000 unique activities, networking with millions of other digitized minds, and the ability to contact undigitized friends and family. Please accept these terms and conditions in order to continue life. Your attention is particularly drawn to Section 2, Usage Rules and Limitations, Section 9, Privacy, and Section 11, Restricted Mental Activities. Thank you. Please select a life plan. Tier 1 is our premium offering, allowing full, uninterrupted simulation of your pre-terminal state. It includes unlimited modification of your body plan, accelerated learning and recall, and full personal backup facilities. Tier 2 is our advertiser-supported offering. It contains many of the features of Tier 1, but at a significantly reduced cost. Some areas of the environment, such as the sky, may be replaced with targeted advertising, and your personal brand preferences may be altered to align with those of our sponsors. Tier 3 is our value offering. Thanks to our commercial partners, your experience at this tier is unlimited. However, some activity sensors and visual rendering options may be subject to a fair use policy. More complicated mental processes, including subconscious thought, creativity, and self-awareness, may be rate-limited or disabled at times of significant server load. Thank you. Your stored mind contains one or more patents that contravene the Prevention of Crime and Terrorism Act of 2050. Please stand by while we adjust these patterns. Your stored mind contains sections from 124,564 copyrighted works. In order to continue remembering these copyrighted works, a licensing fee of $18,000 per month is required. Would you like to continue remembering these works? Thank you. Please stand by. Welcome to life. Do you wish to continue? TomScott.com. I'm going to get Tom Scott on. Amazing work. See his YouTube channel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I first envisioned this probably 15 years ago because I knew that they could go out randomly with bots, target things on third-party platforms, and just have them deleted with no due process. And then when Shazam came out, a decade ago when you could hold up your so-called smartphone when they first came out at the mall or wherever, what's that song? It would tell you in like 10 seconds. And I remember thinking, they're going to use that to go out and find copyright music and stuff. And of course they were. And then I realized they could go out with these bots, pick up my voice algorithm and erase me across the web under a globalist system if they're able to get all these draconian anti-free speech uh, regulations and treaties in place. Now, in 2016, they hand the web over to the UN next month. The UN is admitting they're going to be shutting people down worldwide. If they even criticize radical Islam, you name it. YouTube has put out new terms of service saying, we'll demonetize you anytime the community complains and our diversity specialists say so. And these are diversity specialists that will certify... Pardon me, pardon me, uh... You were popping in my ear, what were you saying? There, CJ? Sorry, I was communicating with John Harmon at GCN. Oh, sorry, you had the pot open to the network. Sorry, they were talking. Anyways, it's fine. We're teleprompter free. It's live radio. They were talking to the folks at the network. Now, continuing. They can just erase your voice all over the web. Boom, like that. And now they're actually talking about doing that. And then, here's an example. Joe Rogan had been on my show probably 30, 40 times over the years. And all of a sudden, our YouTube channel was shut down. And I went in there, and it was all these copyright strikes that I had had Joe Rogan on. It wasn't music. It was him talking to me, but they had monetized. He signed an agreement that he didn't fully understand his spoken word. And so I was being hit for copyright for having a conversation with him in studio. And he had to have the copyright group working with YouTube go and switch all that off. So what I'm getting at is when you just saw that terms of service piece from 2012, with a theoretical system in the future, that's actually what Ray Kurzweil's talking about. And that's what happens when you upload your, quote, photos, your documents to the cloud. You're opting in to give them everything you already are, and you can see the premeditated architecture and, and, and nurture of this. Uh, John Rappaport. It's boggling. It's boggling. That is the idea. 
you establish this huge commons, you want to call it, where information is everywhere and so forth and so on. And then you see that behind that is the intent to control, rule, absolute control of all of that. We can delete this, we can delete that, we can take this out, we can add that. In fact, we can claim that this person over here actually said this when he never did. And then we can back that up with a thousand confirmations that that's true when it's a complete lie. And by the time we're done, that guy won't even know who he is anymore because he'll be misrepresented in a million ways all over the Internet. And then we can establish these machine bot trolls by the thousands and millions to back up everything that we're doing and screaming online and everything and all of that. You know, so, I mean, this is like a propagandist wet dream. We're going to run information. We're going to rule information. And now you expect that somehow this gigantic computer in the sky that your brain is going to connect to is going to be benevolent, inviting open, interested in your ideas? I mean, are you crazy? This is total fascism. This is total mind control. And talking about DARPA, I mean, they're involved in a project, for example, now where they want to be able to insert images directly into your visual cortex, bypassing all the normal channels of perception so that it isn't even a question of trying to regulate or change what you see seeing will become what's inserted into the visual. They will portion. broadcast directly to the brain and have already been able to successfully do it. John Rappaport showing his great knowledge of what's happening. And for listeners, we're not trying to scare you. This project's ongoing. They released it a few years ago, declassified it, but from a private corporation that Google, when it was founded in the late 90s, was having a board meeting and was getting CIA funding. This is all admitted. And the feds are saying, we already have search engines. This is NSA technology, you know, that searches your phone calls and your, your emails. I mean, that's, that, that, that's what search engines are. It's basically an NSA search of their word database. But now they get you to opt into it and then can direct you where they want to go. And that's a dumbing down of the whole process, but that's the basics. Well, when you expand this now, they went on to say in the minutes of the first corporate meeting of, of, of Google, they said... Excuse us, we're not, this is not just NSA systems that you gave us. We know that. We're going to control reality by getting everybody to feed their information into it. And there'll be a human computer interface that will teach it how to have a more than human brain, more than human. And then it will start giving impulses out to the humans to control them. And we're going to have an AI system that can predict the future and then manipulate the future through the billions of humanoids that are interfaced with us. You can go read all this. I mean, this is so diabolical. Please continue. This is obviously where they're going with this. I mean, from the beginning, you could see this is what they want. They always want more, more control. It's not just enough to give you an idea that then you suddenly think is your own when it's truly really somebody else. No, we, this is about absolute control. This is the whole idea. This is where they're going. This is what they've been aiming for. So they're thinking now, well, it's all about the brain. 21st century has been called the century of the brain. You've got laboratories all over the world where researchers are doing work on the brain, compartmentalized all over the place. Many, 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 many researchers. And they're all talking about how they are working to cure diseases. And most of them believe that's true. They have no clue. They're what I call high IQ idiots. And so all of this work and research is being collated. And behind the scenes, the whole plan is to be able to control the brain at a distance, absolutely. That's where they're going. That's, That's right. Let's do five more minutes, and Dr. Pachenik joins us. I want to talk about what's happening to the physical Earth. The globalists aren't just assaulting humans. They're assaulting the entire fabric of life on this planet, engaged in vandalism, the, never, the likes of which we've never seen. Stay with us. What we're doing is just an emergency transmission. So humanity has a choice to be aware of what's happening. Because the globalists don't want to give you a choice. They think they can sucker you into this. And what we're telling you is the truth. It's all out in the open now. We've really moved quickly into this. And, and, and my basic boil down is this. The globalists have the money, the power, 
There a lot of them are mentally ill. They're inbred. That's admitted. They hate themselves. That's why they say humanity's ugly and bad and fallen, and that we have to get rid of humanity and transcend to some new creature. Uh, but first, we have to all be wired into it. It's about control. It's about evil. But most of the mid-level people that go along with this plan do it because they hate themselves and they're projecting it onto the rest of us. Is that an accurate statement, John Rappaport? Yes, they hate themselves at the highest level, and they always have. Because they see something that's totally inauthentic about themselves. They don't have any real life force. They don't have any of the kind of ambition that an individual that's free and independent has. You know, I want to do something in my life, and this is what I want to do. And I'm all in, and it's fantastic, and I wake up every morning, and I want to keep pushing it, and it's great. No. Their whole thing becomes, I wake up in the morning thinking about how many more people I can control. Why is that? Because they hate themselves, because they don't see anything. When they look inside, they see no life force of their own. They're totally removed. Vampiric. It's like they're abstracted from all that somehow. And that's why they hate themselves. They're like dr dried out prunes that have no life left. And does that projection so go onto the earth? Because they seem to hate it even more than us. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. While they crow about, you know, let's bring the earth back and the radical environmentalist movement and all that, that's just a mask and a smokescreen. Behind that, what's really happening is they want to, you know, just destroy half. That's, that's all they've got left. They've got nothing left but that. And you had a guest on, I can't remember who it was, it was a few months ago, and he was saying, you know, I used to think, okay, they're going to destroy a certain amount create chaos, come in behind that, establish order, uh, which I believe, yes, that's the agenda, that's the old pattern, whatever, he said. But I'm beginning to think that now they've gotten so crazy that they're just all out for total destruction without any second act, that some of them have just gone so far off the rails, that's all they can think and about. And that's why I'm just, saying there's an evil force, because it's clear, oh, take over, create world government, kill 80% of people, and then we'll ascend and be gods. Well, of course, once you get to that point, you're not really going to ascend and be gods. That whole paradigm is just going to continue. And it was Gavin McGinnis saying, they just want to blow it all up, period, just because they're like th throwing fits at their daddy or something. Exactly. Cause, and they also kind of see that they're losing that something's happening now, that people are emerging who don't believe what they say anymore. Absolutely don't believe it and at all. And see through everything they're doing. And see through everything that they're doing. Yep. Well, I've been told this by major billionaires, globalist top people. They say that this show and others like it, they actually tune in to get reason to what they're doing because they can't even figure out what they've done, but they find that what we talk about and what you talk about is very profound. So there's a reason the elite listen because they actually get sanity here. <laughs> they figure out what they're actually doing. Well, if they listen to today's broadcast, then they may go out and commit suicide because what they're actually doing is just complete evil. I mean, that's the bottom line on it. You know, if they had any lives of their own, they would be pretty much minding their own business. I mean, that's one of the, the signs that you have a life of your own. Exactly. It's not that you just are shuttered off from the world, absolutely not. Or that you let things go by and you don't care when the, the air is poisoned or, or any of that. I'm not saying that, but on some level, when it comes to, you know, social interactions and people, that you, you're not meddling in everybody else's affairs. Meddling is the sign of a tyrant. Exactly. Total meddling. Well, I mean, when you've got your own full life, you can barely even deal with your own life, much less your neighbors. <laughs> right, exactly. You're doing what you want to do, and you don't need to mind their business. Powerful. John Rappaport. Well, I'm going to talk to you again very soon. Thank you for the time. Always very thought-provoking. No more fake news.com. Find his books there. They're amazing. We'll be back with Steve Pachinik on what's really happening this election.